Hello, Tracy Jones here, and we are going to cover some of the basic operations and movements of the Claws and Colchester 15 inch lathe. Up you have your spindle speed selector right here. You have your low high range feed lever here. You have your threading direction here. You have your coolant pump switch, your running indicator switch, your power on switch, your power off switch. You have your feed controls right here with these three. This one covers A, B, and C, this one R, S, and T, and this quick change gearbox covers gears one through eight. This lever, the only ones we will be using is W for threading and Y for turning and facing. Okay. To select your RPM, you will match up the colors for whichever RPM you need. There are four colors, green, yellow, red, and blue. There is a matching permanently attached key right here. There are four selections on the speed range. You match up the colors. In this case, we're matched 260, 350, 470, 625. The blue arrow is aligned with blue, so this would be 625 RPMs. Now, here's a good example of what may happen. As I try to change gears, it doesn't want to move. You may have to move the spindle just a little bit to get it to line up. So there would be 350, 260, 470. That will set your RPMs. Your feed rate will be set by selecting the correct feeds. chart marked Y. Everything we will do is in inches per revolution. That's what this key is telling you right here. You will look down the center and it will give you a setup for specific feed. LCS1 will give you a 3,000 inches per revolution feed rate. What that means is for every revolution of the chuck, your carriage would move 3,000 of an inch. So in this case, if we were looking at 3,000, it would be LCS1. So we would set our feed. L, C, S, and then one on our gearbox, and with our feed set at Y. So we have now selected our feed and our speed. So we're going to cover the rest of the machine right now. You got your spindle and your chuck. That's what holds your part and rotates. To load your part into the chuck, this this happens to be a three-jaw chuck, and this specific chuck you don't want to run over 625 RPMs due to the style, size, and type of chuck that it is. This is a three-jaw scroll chuck, or also called a universal chuck. All three jaws move at the same time, in or out, with the manipulation of the chuck key. Your chuck key is square on the end and it'll go into the chuck itself as it rotates it'll open and it will close now one thing you want to be sure of never 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 leave the chuck key in the chuck if someone were to come along and accidentally turn the machine on the spindle were to rotate it could come out the chuck key could come out and fly out and hurt someone. So if you're, when your hand comes off of that chuck 
with that chuck wrench, it better be in it. So we're going to take and put a part into the chuck right now. Once you get the part in, you will tighten it up. Now, let's cover the tail stock. Our tail stock is what supports our centers that support the part on an extension. It also allows us to hold a chuck to hold a center drill, a drill, reamer, whatever the case may be. The body itself, the entire unit, will slide up and down on the bedways like this. Once it is in position where you want it to be locked in place, there's a long handle on the back side. You bring the handle up to the locked position. The tailstock is now locked to the bed. Your hand wheel brings out the barrel. This smaller handle is your barrel lock. When brought all the way forward, it will lock the, the barrel in place. Right there, it's not locked, so I can bring the barrel in and out by manipulating the hand wheel. In the barrel, I can put a live center. This has a number four Morse taper on the outside. The inside of our barrel is a number four Morse taper. Tool slides in, the tapers match. To remove it, you hold the center and back up the hand wheel. That will push the center out. The tailstock can also hold the drill chuck. Now the drill chuck has a different tie, it still has a number four taper, but it has a number four taper with a tang. This tang here goes into a groove inside the barrel to keep it from spinning. Before we put it in, we'll make sure it's clean. We're going to put it in, extend the barrel slightly. We're going to rotate the chuck until it goes into place. At that point, we can slide it up, center drill, whatever we need to do. On our carriage, we have multiple ways of manipulation. We can move it under feed, or we can move it by hand. This is your carriage hand wheel. It will move the carriage up and down the bed. Your cross slide feed will move the cross slide, which is the top piece here, forward and back across. This is your compound. Your compound can be moved as well. It can also be locked and it can be rotated. There are four 9 16 nuts. You can loosen those nuts and rotate it all the way around depending on what it is that you're doing. We'll be covering some of those operations later. On top of the compound, you have your tool post. This is a quick change tool post. And the tool holder that actually holds your cutting tool that you will grind, holds in it, drops onto a dovetail, handle's brought back, that locks it in place. Okay. Now, you can also manipulate the carriage under power. That comes into setting of the feed rates that we set a while ago. Now right down here, there are two apron control knobs. This one's a little harder to see. The knob on the right controls direction. The knob on the left controls function. When the, when the function knob is in, you have power to your carriage. 
if I if I have it in and I change the direction, the right knob, it'll feed either front towards the head or towards the tailstock. If I pull the left function knob out, I now have power to my cross slide. Again, I can change direction to have it go forward or have it come back. Just below those knobs, there is a sight glass. Right here. That sight glass shows the amount of oil in the carriage. If it is not full, see your instructor for the proper methods to fill it with lubrication oil. Prior to starting your machine, right here, uh, just above the, the right control knob, is a oil plunger. Prior to using the machine, you'll want to pump it two or three times. You will feel the pressure build up, and what it is doing is it's pumping oil from the bottom of the carriage up into the cross slide and into the carriage onto the bedways so the bedways are lubricated while you have movement. Prior to turning the machine on, it's a good habit to get into to step on the foot brake. If, it is, if the machine is engaged, the clutch is engaged, it will disengage it. So we're going to step on the clutch. That will disengage any of our feeds that we have engaged. Now, when we first start the machine, there is another sight glass right here across from the speed indicator. When I hit my green start button, I want to watch this level. There's an oil level that will rise. If it is not rising, that means the oil pump is not working. You want to stop the machine immediately and see your instructor. So I'm going to turn the power on. And the oil fills. Now I'm going to set my RPMs at 260. a part in the chuck I don't want to run the chuck empty so I'm going to start the chuck into a forward rotation I can do a forward rotation by lifting this lever straight up or this lever straight up just like this and that starts rotation of our chuck. I can disengage it by simply pushing it back down and our chuck stops or once it is started I can step on the foot brake and it will disengage that clutch. Now for our power feed, this is our power feed engagement lever right here. This is what engages our power to the machine. For the movement of the apron or the cross slide. My spindle is engaged, I engage my feed, and you notice the hand wheel for the carriage is moving, it is moving towards the headstock. If I disengage my feed and I change the direction, it will now feed towards the tailstock. If I change the left knob, which is the function, I now have power to my cross slide. I change directions still have the cross slide, but it is moving the opposite direction. Those are some of the basic operations of the lathe.